Chapter 5, A Lesson. <laughs> Wolf had his back turned as the piano lid was slowly opened. What's more, in the sheer pleasure of exercising his newfound talent, his eyes were shut tight as he caroled. When the song ended, he opened them to see once again his mother staring over his shoulder in terror. Looking quickly behind him, he saw the huge round human face peering in and once again he cried, Quick, Mommy, follow me. Out of the body of the piano, they leaped down onto the keyboard, turned a sharp right, whizzed along to the lowest of the bass keys, down the leg and into their hole. Carefully, the lady replaced the prop stick and sat down on the piano stool. She did not notice the few ginger hairs stuck under the rim of the top. For a moment, she wondered if this was, a sort of, this was some sort of dream, but she pinched herself hard and it hurt, so it wasn't. Oh, she said quietly, to think that in my house there lived the there lives the world's first singing mouse. She flexed her fingers to get the stiffness out of them and then began to play very softly Love's Old Sweet Song. Wouldn't it be lovely, she thought, if that mouse came out again and sang to my accompaniment? But of course, no such thing happened. Mrs. Honeybee, for that was the lady's name, rose from the piano stool, got down on her hands and knees with difficulty, for she was not young and her joints were creaky, and found the hole in the molding behind the left front leg of the piano. Most people on finding mice in their home would think right away of traps and poison, or if they had a cat would hope that the cat would solve the problem. But no such thought entered Mrs. Honeybee's head. She loved all animals and could not bear the idea of killing anything, even a wasp or a fly. The one thing that immediately worried her was the cat, which was a stray that had walked in one day and adopted Mrs. Honeybee. But now, finding that she had mice in the house, she realized what a threat the cat posed to them. The cat might kill my singing mouse, she thought. It must never come in here again. She got to her feet and shut the door, not realizing that nothing could ever persuade the ginger cat to enter the living room again. Seated once more at her piano, Mrs. Honeybee pondered what to play. In her youth, she had been a concert pianist. And though rheumatism meant that her gifts were now limited, she loved to play short pieces by her favorite classical composers, Brahms, Beethoven, and of course, Mozart. She liked to play traditional songs and ballads and folk tunes as well. It suddenly occurred to her to test out her singing mouse. It could have learned Love's Old Sweet Song only by sitting in that hole in the molding and listening to me playing it many times, she thought. All right, then, my mouse, said Mrs. Honeybee. I'll teach you another tune, something very simple, and we'll see how soon you can pick it up. What shall it be? And then, because she was thinking about the little animal, she said, I know, three blind mice. It doesn't matter that there are only two of you with perfectly good eyesight. You couldn't understand the words anyway. All we need is the tune. So for, pa so per for perhaps ten minutes, old Mrs. Honeybee played three blind mice again and again and again. At first she just played the melody, but then she began to sing the words to the old nursery rhyme. A horrible woman, that farmer's wife, she thought as she sang. Imagine cutting the tails off mice and blind ones at that. How I hate cruelty to animals. There, she said, bending down toward the mouse hole as the last notes died away. You ought to have learned it by now. And she got up and left the living room, being careful to close the door. Later that evening, after Mrs. Honeybee had fed herself and her cat, and was on her way to bed. She couldn't resist going to listen outside the living room door just in case the mouse might be singing. She put her ear to the keyhole, but all was silent within. Mrs. Honeybee sighed, but before the sigh had even finished, she heard that high, pure, true voice begin to sing Three Blind Mice. But this time, Wolf wasn't just singing La La La. While practicing the new song in his head as Mrs. Honeybee was eating her dinner, he had made up some new some words for it. Mrs. Honeybee couldn't know, of course, but this was what the mouse called Wolf was actually singing. Sing song mouse, sing song mouse, hark to his song, hark to his song. He sings as sweetly as a bird that anyone else in the world had heard. Did you ever hear of a thing as absurd as a sing song mouse? Chapter six, Allure. Though they could not have known it, Mrs. Honeybee and Mary Mouse had something in common. Both were widows. Mr. Honeybee had died peacefully of heart failure many years ago, and the heart of Mary's maid had failed, not at all peacefully, after an unfortunate encounter with the cat. But in another way, Mrs. Honeybee and Mary were not alike at all. 
Mary didn't miss her husband in the least. Mrs. Honeybee missed hers very much. Mary had her favorite young child at home with her. Mrs. Honeybee's children were middle-aged and lived far away, so she seldom saw them or her grandchildren. In short, Mary was not lonely, but Mrs. Honeybee was. For a while, the ginger cat had given her someone to talk to, but now the animals seemed to have become a nervous wreck. The kitchen door needed oiling, and each time Mrs. Honeybee opened it, it gave out a mouse-like squeak, whereupon the cat would leap from its basket and dash out through the cat flap. Perhaps because of the piano player's loneliness, many of the tunes that Wolf listened to were rather sad-sounding ones. But one morning, he was awakened by the sound of a rather lovely, lively tune. What's more, the lady was singing as she played. In fact, Mrs. Honeybee, who talked to herself a lot, had given herself a good talking to. Jane Honeybee, she said severely, you are becoming a miserable old woman, and it shows in your choice of music. The next thing you know, you'll be playing the funeral march. You should count your blessings, my girl. How many other people do you suppose are lucky enough to have a singing mouse in their house? Why, none. So why don't you choose a happy piece of music to teach your mouse? Then it can sing it to you and cheer you up. She thought for a while, and then she smiled and began to play and sing a song she remembered singing as a small girl. Come on, everyone, sing and dance and run, making friends and having a lot of fun. Even if it's raining and the skies are gray, nobody's complaining, it's a lovely day. Come on, everyone, sing and dance and run, making friends and having a lot of fun. There, said Mrs. Honeybee, when she had played and sung the song several times, you should have gotten it in your head by now, Mouse. The tune, I mean, not the words. As she stood up smiling to herself at the ridiculous idea of putting of a mouse putting words to a song. But that is exactly what Wolf now spent a lot a long time doing. That was a happy tune, wasn't it, Mommy? he said once the lady had left the room. She doesn't sing half as well as you do, dear, said Mary, and of course I couldn't understand the words. I'll make some up for you, said Wolf. That evening, as Mrs. Honeybee sat down at her piano, she heard that voice again, somewhat muffled since it was coming from the depths of the, of the mouse hole, though, of course, she could not understand the words Wolf had composed and was now trying out on his mother, and they were, Merry mice are we, Mommy, Mouse, and me. Hear me sing this lovely old melody. You may chance to see us, Lady of the House, Wolfgang Amadeus, and Mom, who's Merry Mouse. Merry mice are we, Mommy, Mouse, and me. Hear me sing this lovely old melody. When Wolf finished singing, he was startled by a sudden sharp noise. Peering cautiously out of the hole, he saw that the lady was sitting on the piano stool, clapping her hands together loudly. Bravo, mouse, said Mrs. Honeybee. You sing twice as well as I do. If you would only come out of your hole and climb up here on the piano, then I could accompany you as you sing. Silly old woman, she went on to herself, accompanying a singing mouse. What a crazy idea. But then the idea of a mouse singing is crazy anyway. Yet this one does, beautifully. One thing's obvious, I must make friends with him, or her. Him, I somehow think. I have a feeling the other bigger one may be his mother. Now what's the best way to make a friend of a, of a mouse? Why, food, of course, but what sort? Then Mrs. Honeybee remembered hearing somewhere that mice are especially fond of chocolate, as, she, as indeed she herself was. She got up and went across the living room to a small table. On it stood a tin in which she kept sweets. From the tin, she took out a packet of chocolates. From the packet, she took out one chocolate and then put the rest back in the tin and closed the lid. She went over to the grand piano and to avoid bending, carefully dropped the one chocolate beside the wheel of the piano's left front leg carefully dropped the one chocolate beside the wheel on the piano's left front leg outside the mouse hole. Then she left the room, shutting the door behind her. Before she went to bed, Mrs. Honeybee just couldn't resist going back to the living room. They probably haven't eaten it yet, I don't suppose, she said. She turned on the light to see if the chocolate was still there. It wasn't. Good boy, she said softly. There's plenty more where that came from. If only you'll come out and sing for me.